So welcome back to the Friday vlog series where today I'm gonna to share with you a video I have been meaning to do for a very long time, and that is share with you my four thoughts from a coach's perspective. I'm a road cycling coach. I'm two of the biggest indoor cycling training apps out there, which I'm using quite a lot at the moment, thanks to the rain season here on the Sunshine Coast, being Zwift and what is now formally known as not the Sufferfest, but the Wahoo Suff training app to highlight the fact that they're now one company with Wahoo. And in this video, I've got a special gift to share with you from the Wahoo Suff. They've kindly given me an access code that's gonna give you a free trial for 30 days. That's on top of their already 14 day free trial. So potentially you're getting 44 days of use on the Sufferfest for free. So if that sounds good, make sure you give the video a like. I'm gonna share that code with you at some point during the video, so stick around. And what I'm also gonna do is share with you my favorite Wahoo Suff workouts for getting stronger for Zwift racing and bunch riding. Now for transparency purposes, just know that the Wahoo Suff are partners of my online coaching business called the Up Level Road Cycling Course, which opens four times a year. We make 50 spots available and it's open right now. For anyone that's interested, you can check out links below, but just know that this video is not sponsored by Wahoo Suff, they're not paying me for the video. This will be the first time that they see it. And personally, I use both Zwift and Wahoo Suff because ultimately I believe they don't so much compete with each other, more so complement each other. Now, before we split this video into four main parts, which include, number one, the biggest mistakes cyclists make before they start indoor training. Number two, how Zwift and Wahoo Suff vastly differ. Number three, where they compete and their strengths and weaknesses. And number four, how they complement each other. So they're the four things, but a quick funny story for you before we get into them. I rode my first Zwift race in about three or four months on the weekend that's just gone, and I got dropped on the second lap in a city crit race. Really struggled, and I was really down on myself. I thought I've lost a lot of fitness. I asked my wife, I was quite depressed for about three or four hours and then I realized something. I had changed my weight in Zwift from 78 kilograms to 120 kilograms in order to race my wife on Zwift. You can check out the video up the top of the screen and I forgot to change my weight back. So racing with an extra 42 kilograms? This guy's a dickhead! So the first thing that I wanted to share with you is the big mistake cyclists make before they start indoor training. And that is, they go straight to the bunch rides, the racing, the high intensity workouts in the Sufferfest before they've properly developed their aerobic fitness. Now, what I take members of my coaching course through, the Up Level Road Cycling course, is what I'm gonna share with you right here. And the first thing that you wanna do is get your functional threshold power number to begin with. Now, if you don't have an indoor trainer, you can go do the 20 minute test outside, which I recommend, but because we're talking about indoor cycling here, I'd personally recommend either the ramp test in Zwift or the half Monty in the Sufferfest. The second thing you'll do is calculate your zone two endurance power number. I like to go 65% of your FTP for a conditioned rider and 70% of your FTP for a non-conditioned rider. Now that may seem counterintuitive, but what I find with unconditioned riders, those who have not trained properly before, is that they're less likely to get through the testing protocol as well as a conditioned rider and they improve quite rapidly. So say your FTP was 250 watts as an unconditioned rider, go 70% of 250 watts and would go 175 watts as your zone two number. Then you'd pedal at 175 watts for one hour consistently, no stopping, and see what happens to your heart rate. What we're essentially doing here is assessing how your cardiovascular system responds, which the heart is the cornerstone of, to aerobic base training. To give you an example here, so we can look at some data from an up-level road cycling course member called Ali. Many months ago, he did this test at 210 watts for him and his heart rate measured at 15 minutes in, which is when you're settled into the test at just over 150 beats. And he finished off the one hour with a heart rate drifting into the mid 160s. Fast forward a few months to the same test, but for two hours now, and his starting heart rate at around the 15 minute mark is in the mid 130s. And at the hour, he's drifted to 140, so marginal and finishes off the two hours, which is a long time on a trainer, at the same point he basically started the test many months prior. In other words, his base aerobic engine is so much more efficient now than what it was previously. And what we did with Ali is we got him on a base fitness program before getting into the high intensity 
training, which is what you should do. Before getting into the hard high intensity training and races that's on offer in these magnificent apps. And look, you can focus on base or aerobic training in both these apps and the Wahoo Suff now has mini cycling documentaries you can watch while training the base engine. And the base engine is definitely where you should focus pending your cardio drift results. Number two is how Zwift and Wahoo Suff vastly differ. So the obvious one is Zwift's virtual world. E-racing, bunch rides, virtually having a social ride with your mates, that stuff is heaps of fun. It hooks you in and does not exist on the Wahoo Suff. And that's the primary reason why I use Zwift for the e-racing component. In terms of how Wahoo Suff differs, and I think this is an interesting one because not many people know it exists. And that is, there's a library of number one, mental strength and visualization training videos. Number two, core strength, flexibility and yoga videos. And number three, off bike strength and conditioning videos. All sequenced in a way that enable you to go from a beginner level to an advanced level. And what I say to people, that I work with is you don't actually need an indoor trainer in order to get value out of Wahoo Suff. You can purely use it for off-bike training to enable you to improve your performance on the bike. So that is how they differ. Number three is where they compete, which is indoor cycling workouts and plans. To me, this is where the Sufferfest wins hands down for three primary reasons, which we'll get to in a second because Zwift does win in this section on one component, and that is where you can create your own workouts in Zwift using an incredibly intuitive and easy to use drag and drop functionality, which you cannot do in the Wahoo Suff. But personally, I've never really desired that functionality in the Wahoo Suff because their library of workouts and plans is so comprehensive. And what you may not realize is the workouts and plans are created by Neil Henderson, a highly regarded coach of world champion cyclists and his team. Whereas Zwift, I don't know who's creating the workouts and plans. And to be honest, I've been left a little confused regarding some of them, which we'll get to. So the first thing that I like about the soft workouts, which I feel is superior is, I feel like generally they are better crafted. For example, I did this training session on Zwift last night called Wave Rider. There's an eight minute warm up without any openers with only a two minute warm down. After the eight minute warm up, I then went straight into a 525 watt effort. To me, this was ludicrous. I'd much rather firstly flip that around a little bit, so spend a little bit more time on the cool down and less on the warm up, so maybe five or six minutes on the warm up, and in the warm up, have some opening efforts, say below threshold or around threshold, instead of essentially going straight into a 525 watt effort. And there's plenty of workouts like that in Zwift. Wahoo Suff, on the other hand, you will always be given a good warm up period, opening up your upper end systems before you really start to go deep. You'll also get a good spin down afterwards, which is critical to clear byproducts from lactate accumulation. In regards to testing protocols as well, I genuinely believe the Suff is your better option there. I particularly like the half Monty as a ramp test as it also incorporates a sustained effort after the ramp to provide a more accurate functional threshold power number and additional data points such as your maximal aerobic power number and your lactate threshold heart rate. Reason number two is the plans are better crafted. For example, both apps appear to have plans that are suited for Criterium Racing, so I went and investigated both. However, before I did so, I thought, surely there's the old one minute on, one minute off efforts incorporated into these plans. However, if we look at the Zwift program, there's no real one minute on, off efforts. They do form part of some of the workouts, but with two minutes off or five minutes off, and strangely, there's a lot of sub-threshold and zone four workload, which is fine. I just don't think zone four threshold work should be the cornerstone of a Criterion program. If we look at the equivalent in the Wahoo Suff, one of the very first workouts is the Revolver, which incorporates 11 one minute on, one minute off efforts before getting into some nasty 15 second on off efforts. And these type of workouts are incorporated throughout the plan. Reason three is the Wahoo Suff workouts to me are more motivational. So the structured workout I did on Zwift last night, that was the first time I've ever done a structured workout on Zwift, and to be honest, I found it quite boring finding myself staring at the window quite often. However, with the Wahoo Suff, you're watching real race footage. With GoPro cameras set up on pro cyclist bike during some of the biggest World Tour races on the globe, the efforts you do align with the race footage and so does the music that goes with it. And while some of the music isn't to my liking, that's very easy, you can switch that off, put on your own, 
and off you go. And I think it's a blend of the music and the race footage that aligns to the intense efforts that makes the sessions feel like they go a lot faster, which is always a good thing. Now, one issue with both apps is I feel like there's a lot of high intensity in many of the plans. And I feel like even if you're not doing the plans, there's an inclination to do a lot of high intensity. So cyclists, if they do too much high intensity, they tend to plateau because they're riding in a fatigued state. They can't get the most out of their high intensity work. And as a result, they can never achieve what they want to achieve. Julian is a prime example of that. Somebody I've worked with who did one of these 12 week programs plateaued at 282 watts. We got him to 311 just by getting the blend right of base training and also high intensity work. Now the last one, number four, is how both these apps complement each other. For me, the Wahoo Suf has the best independent workouts, plans and off bike workouts. In fact, I don't think Zwift even offer anything off bike. So. If you can leverage that capability in the Wahoo Suf and then take it into Zwift, I could almost guarantee your bunch riding, your e-racing, or any virtual social riding you do will go to the next level. So I'll put the 30-day free code for the Wahoo Suf up on the screen and workouts you might like to consider in the Wahoo Suf to get you stronger for Zwift bunch riding and racing include the attacker, the defender, FTP builds eight times two, FTP map builds eight times three, Hell Have No Fury, Power Station, Team Scream, and The Bat. So that's pretty much it. If you're new to the channel and you've gotten value out of this video today and you wanna see more content like this, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and I'll catch you all in the next video.